guide your journey into Cabernet Sauvignon magnificence. It's day three of Cape Wine. There are a few weary people wandering around. It's been a big couple of days of celebration so far, but one last stretch to drink some fantastic wine, make a few final friends, and ensure that the wine of South Africa stays at the forefront of everybody's thoughts. There's been an influx of British wine royalty to Cape Wine and Imogen headlines that particular list. Oh. How much fun has this been? It's been a very, it's been fantastic to back in Cape Town. Uh, yeah, really super few days, a lot of good wine, a lot of lovely to see, you know, happy faces. No one ever seems to ever really grow up all around. Yeah, very, very happy to be back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. When you do reluctantly get home, what are you going to be taking away from Cape Wine in terms of your assessment of where we are at the moment? I think um, I was just saying uh, very exciting to see lots of slightly alternative non-classic Sauvignon, whether with uh, skins or, uh, you know, late release, a little bit of oak. Um, I mean, Colombar, the kind of Col Colombar sort of mini revolution that I've been aware of since uh, tasting Bertie Coutier's uh, Colombar that I think Lucas made a few years ago from Kaylee at Rebel Rebel. I mean, it's 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 I certainly not something I would expect to see. Um, and then also 2022 whites, like super fragrant, super exuberant. Yeah, lots of fruit. Yeah, smelling really good, the few I've tasted. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and in terms of South African wine in the UK at the moment, we tend to think we're doing reasonably well and that we're also shifting our perception from being bottom of the supermarket shelf to people understanding us as a premium wine producing country. Is that a, a fair assessment? And I, th I think I have quite a bias to you just because of where I've come from and, and, and the work that I have done. Um, I, I think what is most important about this African wine is that at any point from £10 a bottle up to 60 or 65 value is the biggest thing in terms of whether you're really talking fine wine, the price in comparison to the old world, whether it's Chardonnay or Syrah, or stuff that is maybe supermarket price, they so punch above their weight and over deliver. Um, but yes, I think UK has been a, been a huge supporter. Um, I mean, there's a fantastic UK contingent here. Um, I think we're all incredibly lucky to be here. And yeah, no, all well, very going very well indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for coming out. Thank you for enjoying Cape Wine and keep supporting South African wine. Thank you. Cheers. So if you ever walk into Greg Sherwood's bedroom in London, you'll find a few things. You'll find a framed London Welsh jersey. You'll find a signed poster of Ian Nodir. And then you'll find a selection of pictures of Saki Mouton. <laughs> because he is the man who I think uh, was a, he was a big part of introducing the wine that's now got people at Cape Wine queuing up to come and have a taste of and this wonderful crayfish of yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's super nice to meet you there. Uh, yes, you're happy to finally. Great to meet We be can here. drink it together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about your Cape Wine experience this week. Um, well, not a lot of sleep, a um, lot of farting. Um, yeah, basically tasting way too many good wines. And uh, yeah, just awesome people all around there. Yeah, it's been amazing. Really, really good. I uh, imagine that must be a really cool aspect of this. And as much as you can get away from your stand, uh, discovering a whole pile of wine that you've never had before. Like I am, I'm, I'm surprised. Or I'm not even surprised actually, just by the amount of good wines that South Africa is producing. It's, in, it's insane. Like you walk around the corner and just, there's something just amazing there again. So no, it's, it's insane. I'm, I'm yeah. I'm privileged to be able to make wine in this country. It's very, very cool. How inspired do you get by meeting other producers and seeing what they're doing? No, it's crazy. I, I was in Norway uh, about three weeks ago and we were about 12 South African winemakers going there to pour our wines for some of the trade. And it was crazy. I was with, you know, Chris Alike was there and Ardi and all these guys. And I, one night I told them, guys, you know, you're like, you're my heroes. And here I am, the young guy with all of you guys. Like, it's crazy. Like, it's insane. Now. It's so cool. So cool. Well, yeah, I think you're in good company there because in a short space of time, you've made wines that have had a very big impact on a lot of people. That's only going to continue. What's new at Cape Wine for you? Well, new at Cape Wine for me, I think, yo, the column bars, man. All the amazing column bars. I'm super happy about that. Um, 
And obviously, yeah, I know we started that thing and now it's, uh, it's crazy. And, and all the column bars I've tasted are just super good. Now. Super, super good. So definitely my Cape Wine discovery is column bar. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm going to go and look for some more column bar. And I'll start with yours. But thank you. Love to spend some time with you. Awesome. And super uh, nice to meet you. Cheers, yeah. Saki. Awesome. Yeah. A huge part of the South African wine story is its heritage. And a big part of that heritage is the old vines. And an even bigger part of the heritage is this man here, Andre. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Uh, and, and to celebrate something that I think you've had a really big driving part in getting the world talking about. Because if I go back 10 years, discussions of old vines and their importance wasn't really a common topic. Now it's a, a commercial driver and it's a really important part of what we're saying about South African wine. Yeah, you touch on two very important points. The one is the history of this project. It started 20 years ago with Rusa looking for these old parcels. And then the commercial side of it is very important because what we try to do is, is, is develop um, a, a business model that will work for the grower and the brand owners and also keep old one projects sustainable. And uh, you talk about drive. What we find is since we've introduced the seal, it's very important for people to understand what the seal means for the old vines. It is, it, it gives the consumer the guarantee of traceability, um, authenticity, and we're finding now that there's uh, a pull out of the market. So millions and importers are asking for the seal to be on the bottle if you claim old vine. You can't just put old vine on the, on the label anymore without the certification. How difficult was it to change the perception around old vines and their value? You know, it, it was difficult in South Africa to convince uh, certain growers because they all look at the bottom line. So when the vine grows older, the yield drops. So it's not economically viable anymore. So to, to convince people to keep those vines in the ground was a challenge. But with the help of many of our members, and also looking at Portugal, Spain, Barossa, California, Chile, what's been done there with old vines. And France, when I worked in Burgundy, Le Vin is, uh, you know, it's been around for generations, but there's never been a standard set for 35 years and old as we've done. And uh, there's never been a certification like this. So we formalize it in a, a first in the world. The vines that we have that are being celebrated in the sort of wine have led to another celebration, and that was probably the highlight of this last week for the South African wine industry. And I say that with uh, with no sense of overstating the case. The rosé you referred to is Rosa Clear, and the world has said you've done something pretty special. It is very special for us that Rosa got the the award. It's the decanter um, induction to the Hall of Fame Personality of the Year. Uh, there's only 28 people, I think, that's been uh, inducted. And if you look at the list of names, Angela Gaia, etc., there's all the people that's made a difference in the international wine industry. And Rosa is the first South African and the first viticulturist. And that's something that's very important for us as a viticulture in our vineyards, whether it is old vines or what I call plant to grow old for our future. If people are out doing their shopping, they're dropping in a pick and pay, they're looking for a bottle of wine, What's your message to them about why Old Vines is going to make a difference to their wine drinking experience? They are contributing to um, people's lives. It's about conservation of old vineyards, but it's also about looking after our people, the landowners, the custodians, and the farm workers. So you're actually investing in something that's a generation from now. And the result of that is wine that is almost as beautiful as Andre's hair. <laughs> now, if there's a slight shimmer on screen, that would be the aura of the Tim Adkin Young Winemaker of the Year. Uh, I've been through eight different agents to get granted an audience. <laughs> Shelley, it's so good to see you. And congratulations in person. It's, it's very well deserved, but also just lovely, isn't it? Yes, no, I'm taking it all in. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Yeah. It comes from the wine that you and I have spoken about on a, a number of occasions. Uh, what is it like getting this kind of space 
to now show your story to people from all over the world. No, it's incredible. Our previous story, we were women in wine, so I think as a woman, you know, yeah, it's been it's been very cool. But yeah, just the the amount of people tasting our wines, the exposure has been incredible, and yeah, old and new faces. So yeah, it's been great. And just sharing the Malfa story, I think that's very important for us, part of the Gallus Wine Triangle, you know, sharing the extreme viticulture, extreme winemaking. Um, yeah, so very positive. We're very happy to be here. You touch on something there that speaks to the this event as a whole in that there is such a warmth amongst our South African winemakers and our wine community. If you distill that down to more local space, the Agalas Wine Triangle, it's just like a club of great mates, isn't it? <laughs> well, we were talking earlier, just like the other day I was saying, you know, I can phone Ibn Saudi and ask him, how do I spray a tank or how do I do that? And he actually takes the time to respond or talk to you. So it's incredible, like just the warmth among, amongst wine makers and the industry and then in the triangle, you know, we're hustling hard in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so you need your friends, you need people to, um, yeah, sound boards. And I think Andre has done a great job with the triangle and getting everyone together. And yeah, it's a very cool, it's a cool time to be alive. <laughs> and it's a cool time to be a South African winemaker because the, uh, the whole industry is in a really cool space at the moment. Yes. I know your job is supposed to be pouring wine and telling you <laughs> about, about your wine, about the Gallus Wine Triangle. Have you had much time to slip away and, uh, and sample some new stuff? have been trying to um, but yes there's some very very cool some cool friends around and it's nice tasting your friends wines you know um, but yes there's been some very cool things to taste um, and I mean we're here next to popular demand all the women so it's always nice to, to be tasting their things as well and yeah there's all this you can't even you know say oh you need to go taste this or that there's a there's too many things to taste obviously you need to taste Duncan Savage <laughs> You just need to see Duncan. You need to see it with his skinny and shimmering tights. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, it's lovely tasting all this wine. It's particularly lovely tasting yours in your company. Yes, and well done again, you young maker, winemaker <laughs> of the year. You. Thank you. Now, one thing I've learned very quickly when you meet anybody from West Africa, don't mention jollof rice. You will start to fight very quickly if you get it wrong. So let's <laughs> ask you about wine instead, Kim. What's the wine experience been like for you at Cape Wine? Uh, I, sh I, I should be with a glass right now. <laughs> well, it's been really amazing. I have been drunk for most of the time. Like it's, it's, been, it's been really exciting to actually see the wine community in this extent. I never knew the wine community was this massive and this large, especially in Africa. So it's just really, really interesting to just see like everyone in Africa and the world at large come together and showcase the beautiful and amazing wines that they produced. From the Nigeria experience I've had, I know Bubbles is very, very big. Uh, how much of an impact is South African sparkling wine having on the Nigerian market? Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of the wines that we have are imported from South Africa. Yeah, um, it's been it's been really good. Uh, the wine community in Nigeria is is more on the quiet side, but the wine sector really does well. I actually just came to understand that the wine sector is really doing very well because most of the uh, people that I've spoken to here so far have said that maybe they export like fifty percent of their businesses to Nigeria and they're doing very well in Nigeria. They, they sent over five thousand, you know trucks or crates of wines and stuff so i'm like it's really really interesting and the community is actually definitely growing right now we have a restaurant called wine lab restaurant in nigeria in lagos to be precise that only serves wines brilliant exactly. sounds like somewhere i should visit you definitely should <laughs> based on what you've seen at cape wine the wines you've tasted do you think there's a potential for even more South african wine to get into the nigerian market oh definitely i've had a, i've had a really good taste of amazing different wines from different producers and i have to say i'm i'm captured i'm captivated i have a whole gallery of the bottles i've, I've taken so many pictures because i'm like i like this one i like this one i like this one i would love to see that in my country i don't have to travel all the way to south africa and they're very much interested also to come in exploring uh ventures new ventures in nigeria so i'm pretty sure we'll have more more impact very soon from the south african community well, I look forward to that happening and thank you for supporting thank South African Wine. Thank you, I love South Africa.
So until today, Matthew Mensah was the most famous Ghanaian I knew. He's now down to number three, because there's a guy called Bill who's really cool. And then there's a mayor who is the biggest blogger in West Africa, and also by the looks of things, a bit of a wine fan. Yeah, I, I, I like to take my wine as a basic consumer, not as a, a connoisseur or anything, but just enjoying it and giving people feedback on what I think. Tell me about wine in Ghana. Is it something most people would have a glass of from time to time? Well, at the moment it is, uh, but back in the days it wasn't so much so. In the beginning it was seen to be something with the elites, and so there were those who had all the fancy wines, perhaps went to wine shops to get what they wanted. But uh, recently, uh, ever since we started having a mall culture in Ghana, we realized that a lot of these things, lifestyle things, are being I suppose I'm brought to the doorsteps of the average Ghanaians. And so you realize that somebody may go to game or shop right to do regular shopping and then comes across wines, uh, look at what he can afford, goes to try it, and then perhaps start now consuming it. And so you realize that that has helped uh, to increase uh, the intake of wine in, in, in Ghana. And also, kudos to South African wines, uh, because wines of South Africa has been over the years holding annual uh, wine tasting events. And as somebody who is, has partnered them for over the years, anytime I put it out there, you realize everybody wants a ticket to come. And when it happens, uh, they're able to bring the wine producers closer to the Ghanaians and they interact with the wine, uh, get to understand and appreciate it a lot more. So all these things have helped to where we are now. I know you get to go to some pretty cool events. Mm -hmm. How does Cape Wine rate for you as an experience? Oh, it's an amazing experience. This is my third time coming back, and each time feels different. Different, even if it's the way they group the winemakers or the individual stands they have. And of course, the parties are always amazing for somebody like my, myself. Uh, because people sometimes feel like there's only so much you can do with wine, and you get bored. But the way they plan the program throughout makes it very exciting and makes it makes you feel something new each time you experience it. So it's, it, it's, it's top there. I'm really glad you're able to be part of it and for a third time. Thank you for supporting it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in our car because I promised Bill and Matthew uh, that I'm coming to do a taste off <laughs> to see if Ghana and Jollof is really better than Nigeria. I mean, Matthew would tell you it is because Matthew also sort of flirts with Nigeria a lot. And, and so when he tells you that God, the love is the best, then you have to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Lovely having you on. Enjoy the rest of it. Thank you. So over the course of the three days at Cave One, I've tasted some pretty special wines. Saki Mouton gave me some of his original Revenge of the Crayfish, a whole pile of wine in the Swakland Ali. Uh, tasted the brand new wine from Thornton Pille. But the wine I'm most excited to try, because I'm drinking it for the very first time, is this one with one of the most exciting young wine people in the country. We get to meet in person and I yes. finally get to drink your wine. Yeah, yes, ah, I only saw you and then there was a lot of sharing and all of that. So it's so nice to meet you face to face. Oh, well, cheers. We're going to talk about cheers. the wine in just a second. Uh, but for those people who don't know, let's talk about the Academy first of all, the Penitage Youth Development Academy. It's a wonderful, wonderful space. Tell us a bit about what it does and how it's changed your life. Okay, so PYDA, um, it's more about youth. Um, it's, they train young people to be work readiness. Um, so the, the, in the, the PYDA, the, the Academy, so they train between 20, 18 to 25 year people. Um, and then I was lucky to be part of their program, which is wine and tourism back then, but then now they changed to wine and marketing. Um, I was first shy to be in front of 150 people. I had no confidence, but then they groomed me to be the person I am, to be the leader, because I'm leading this brand. I'm managing Ubucha wine brand. When I first were in the interview at PYJ, I hide behind someone else, which was Trust Salaka. And then Zukani Mechani, who was a coordinator back then at PYJ, he spotted me out, and out of him and said, Diana, please get out of, of Salaka's back. I was so shy. I even cried that day. But then now, you wouldn't believe when I'm standing in front of a lot of people explaining who I am and then telling my story that I'm coming I'm a single mother, and then I was raised by a single parent, and then um, I, I, I wanted to be a, a CA, a chartered accountant, but then my marks 
were not um, good to be in the varsity, then, but PYT accepted me, and then I'm, I was part of the wine program. And that has led you to one of the most exciting wine stories of the last few years, yes. because you guys have come together and you've made, made this, this wine. wine. Uh, tell me the story about creating this wine. So we created Ulucha in 2021. Um, in, during COVID-19, you can imagine. Um, so I was a student in 2020. I didn't get much exposure into the wine industry because of COVID. We are all didn't get. But then Delham and Kuwait, when they collaborated and then came up with this idea of us making wine from the start till to the finish. So we were more excited to be part of those that journey, to be more exposed to the wine industry. We researched about the industry and then we saw that there is less of there's less um women in, in wine and then there was less black owned wine it's more about two percent of the wine industry as a whole that are owned by the black so we are black we are proud of south africans and then we came up with ulucha we made the wine which is pinot touch and then this is a pinot touch month um tomorrow we are celebrating international pinot touch day which is i'm excited about um then we are celebrating our culture that this is proudly South Africa. Well let's try it. The Lucha Pinata. Drinking yes. this for the very first time. So here we go. You know what I like most about this wine? What is it? I think a lot of people would buy it just because of the story. And you could probably sell it just on the story. But you've actually got some wine to back it up. It's wine you can sell without that story, and I think that's really important. So this wine, it's a medium-bodied wine with a lot of your red fruits, um, and then on your palate you can taste the Pinot touch. On your nose you would smell the Simso, which is the father, and then in your palate you would feel that body of and then the, 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 the barrel maturation. We, we matured this wine into our second full French oak barrel for about 14 months. So it can age about five plus years. Uh, much like the Pinotar Youth Development Academy, much like yourself, it is a triumph. I really like it and I love watching your journey. I know it's only just getting started. There'll be plenty more journeys to come. Uh, enjoy them and well done. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. And so ends three wonderful days of celebration of South African wine. Cape wine has been terrific. It's been a little overwhelming. So much wine, so many people. But the general consensus, the wine is terrific. The people who make it even more so. And South African wine in a really good space. We've had some tough years, but the horizon looks so exciting. And based on these three days, we are sending ambassadors of South African wine back to the rest of the world, armed with the knowledge and understanding that in South Africa, we're pretty good at making wine.